All right, making this video a second time, which is sort of annoying, because um, uh, error on my part, we'll just call it. Uh, but anyway, um, so a response to a comment by It's BS, and um, sort of, you know, it's good that there's some communication, but it's, you know, it's sort of talking past each other, so it's the same thing as sort of like the Franklin Who thing. There's, you know, subjects, and you got to stay on the subject and take one subject at a time and pick it apart and show why, the, what's a valid argument, what isn't, and all that kind of stuff. But it takes argument. Everybody thinks they're going to, you know, prove something without having to argue anything, and maybe that's how conventional physics got away with it. You know, maybe they got away with it without having to argue anything, but... Um, if you want to do it right, you have to have the argument. You, know, you have to have the trial. The lawyers have to spend time um, harassing, you know, even witnesses and whatnot to try to get to the truth. And, uh, you know, so we sort of, you know, it's kind of hard to avoid antagonism. And, um, you know, there's definitely trigger sentences in this comment of his. And I'll try not to be too triggered, but... <laughs> yeah, it's just no point in saying I won't be offended by the offensive. Eh, yeah, well, whatever. So he said, thanks for taking the time to respond to the video. Likewise, thanks for taking the time to respond to the video with a comment. Um, and let's try to maintain that procedure because that's how you get somewhere, is to have the argument, <laughs> the conversation anyway. Um, anyway, first, I don't have a theory, so, you know, see, this is where, oh, wait, wait a minute, this is just so dishonest that I, you know, it's, we can't even have, we can't even start having a conversation. So, he makes a video saying, uh, he's debunking something. I mean, to say that doesn't, isn't based on you already having an opinion or something, and you're not, you're not advocating for a position, it would just be kind of silly. So, to say you don't have a theory, and you're a lawyer arguing the evidence, it just really doesn't make much sense. I mean, I don't buy it. So, it just seems incredibly dishonest, the statement. But anyway, which is something you assume through your entire video. Well, I'm just saying, you title your video, you're debunking something. You're making assertions all over the place. You're making arguments defending certain things as being facts. Um, and yet you're saying you're not an advocate. I, you know, no, I'm sorry, I can't buy that. I'm just trying to find the most logical existing theory, so I don't know what you mean by existing, um, that, that to and best fit for me. So I don't even know what that means, this best fit for me thing. Um, so yeah, if you're not really trying to find the truth, then yeah, I, I guess it would be a waste of my time to have a conversation with somebody who's not interested in the truth. So I would think our both of our honest objectives should be the truth, not some sort of what fits best. Um, and so you're either an advocate for a, uh, an idea, and again, you're clearly an advocate for the idea that they are wrong. And I'm arguing that your claims that they are wrong are wrong, in the sense that you have the, the wrong, you've got it backwards. Um, who killed who? You, you've got the whole story almost inverted, in the sense that you think they're wrong about the only stuff they're right about, in a way. I mean, obviously we would agree that um, quantum computing is bullshit, and a lot of uh, the other stuff they claim is bullshit, but we certainly don't agree that, um, you know, particles are bullshit. I am simply sharing my research on this topic. Well, that, you know, that's not exactly what you're doing, so, you know, you can say that's what you're simply doing, but that's not what you're simply doing. You don't name a video debunk, okay? You don't put the word debunk in it if you're just sharing information. Um, in terms of what I see as illogical with mainstream theories, um, yeah, and that's that's a, that's a, a, you don't see how that's going to be. That's an aggressive statement, in the sense that you are making an assertion, and it's an assertion that lots of people would say, "I'm not illogical. What the hell are you talking about? I'm going to defend myself against that statement." And again, the the part you're saying is illogical, in my opinion, is the part that's the most. The only thing that's valuable in the whole frickin' theory is the word particle. Beyond the word particle, conventional physics has everything wrong. So, you know, outside of the word particle, they got everything else wrong. Um, a how to debunk is not a scientific proof. 
well, I don't even know what that even means. Um, you didn't make a how to debunk video. I certainly didn't do it. Uh, so I don't even know what that means. It's an argument being made. I made an argument in my video of why I think you're wrong and why they're wrong. But more specifically, I made an argument about why you're wrong about what you think they're wrong about. Because the only part they're right about is the part you think they're wrong about. All right, anyway, keep rolling with your own theories. This is the patronizing part where, you know, any decent person says, oh, fuck you. Um, keep rolling with your theory. Yeah, keep playing, you know, with your uh, Play-Doh theories, your non-existent theories, your imaginary theories that you don't even recognize as theories. <laughs> you know, keep playing with yourself uh, if it makes sense to you. Yeah, well, same to you, fuckhead, all right? So if you think somebody, if somebody's typed that on your video, you think you'd say, oh, thanks, I really appreciate that. No, I think you'd say, oh, you just, you just snarked at me, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, you seem to make this more about your theory. No, I, I think I shared equal time uh, pointing out their theory, your theory, and my theory. I think I gave them all equal time, frankly, uh, which I don't know. Well, again, the part that you need to know I gave you. I pointed out that I'm saying the photon is a composite object, that the frequency is a, <laughs> it's a logically real thing. It, photons don't land on surfaces and then, oh, it's instantly a photon. It takes time for a photon to land on a surface. It takes time for it to move on electrons. An electron plus. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, which I don't know. Instead of quantum mechanics, well, quite obviously, it's the same subject. You have a theory. You have an argument to make about what photons are. They have an argument to make about what photons are. And I have an argument to make about what photons are. So what rule did I violate? I talked about all three of those arguments. Also, God juice and God jello. God jello. God jello. You have to make it one word. Yeah, it is funny. Uh, anyway, but it is disturbing to me, frankly, because, yeah, it all seems like you people are chasing woo. And you sort of, you know, now that I've read this, <laughs> you know, I hadn't read it the first time I went through it. Um, you know, you, you're, you seem like you, you're, yeah, you're seeking some sort of magic. All right, to clarify some questions in your response video, the reason the medium is important is because it is engineerable. So, again, uh, so this is why he didn't like Einstein's line, I guess. He's saying, you know, because Einstein's basically saying that the only place you engineer it from, okay, is controlling the force. And the only way you control the force is to control the matter that's reflecting the force. And the only way you do that, control the matter, is to hit it with a force. So, you know, you're sort of out of players here. There's nothing to engineer. The universe is a clock, and it is ticking, you know, and the hands are going to do certain things, and sorry, there's nothing to engineer um, in terms of, except the determinism of it, <laughs> you know. But anyway, while empty space is not, so this idea that the ether provides some mechanism that will feed you in some way, it can't give you anything. There's an action here, and the medium, the ether are not just transfers it so you can hit a domino and knock a bunch of dominoes over and then the domino hits over here or you can just throw the domino so einstein's just saying and i'm just saying who cares ether smether all you're saying is it's a domino flipped over here and a domino flipped over here and that's it it doesn't really matter how it got there and there's nothing to engineer the medium isn't doing anything it's just saying <laughs> Action, reaction. Well, anyway, it is engineerable by understanding <coughs> geometric forms and resonance. Now, resonance is an important word. I mean, I've, the whole video I made to you was basically pointing out the importance of it, that um, it's about hitting electrons at their resonance and in the sense of adding energy to a system. So you either remake a photon, uh, combine the energy back in phase, or you don't combine it back in phase and that energy isn't dead it's just not going to move an electron so if the idea is to move the electron with the energy that is move it in a direction you need to hit it in that direction if you want to just wobble it well fine you can do that with broken light 
but you can't move the electron to a new location by moving it back and forth. That won't get you there. So if you want to add energy, you have to add it in a, in a specific way. Uh, and the idea of particles in empty space just seems to lead us <coughs> to smash them together. Well, I don't know, it leads you to that. I don't see and I don't have any compel compulsion to give a shit about accelerators and smashing things together. So I don't think that's the only experiment ever conducted. Clearly, there's a ton of experiments in optics and all kinds of things. So it's clearly not the only thing to do with these things. Um, they're quite manipulatable. There's lots of lots of theory um, in terms of how they can be manipulated. Understanding how to engineer the medium. So again, engineer what? You know, to engineer something that requires force to to to, to happen. For there to be force in the medium, the medium doesn't have its own energy, um, except beyond the energy of, as I'm pointing out, gravity, which is the bits already in the field, the bullets already hitting us. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll make all our lives easier to live. So this is just some. Now he's, this is the part where I was trying to get that answer out of him. Is what, what's, what's the philosophy behind this? Because yeah, you're really not talking as a scientist. There's obviously some other th agenda here. The truth isn't about easier or harder or any of that. The truth is about the truth. That's it. It doesn't matter whether it's a happy truth or a sad truth. Uh, if you seek it, that's different than seeking this easier to live thing you know uh, lives easier to live so I don't even think it's true frankly even if you had all your Tesla magic um, your life wouldn't be that much easier it wouldn't cure your cancer or some other shit it's not going to solve all the pro getting old it's not going to solve all these problems so this is just all more just magic talk I mean we have dirt cheap energy um, when you think about it realistically compared to all the other stuff you have to pay for uh, energy is pretty cheap and um, you know we could have it for virtually for free if we just invested in it you know collectively in Hoover Dam style ways but we don't do it the right way we do it the wrong way anyway exactly like the electric generator transmission <coughs> line motor combination so whatever this statement is so you know he, he wants to look at everything back you know yeah, it's really cool. The turbine moves over here, and it, the engine moves over here. Yeah, really cool. Um, but isn't that really so elementary? That's really not physics. You know, physics is a little bit. You know, it has to deal with something a little bit more than um, the almost uh, statement that there's a conservation of movement in the universe. Uh, none of what was done with particles, none of that was done with particles. Well, that's just absolute nonsense, so frankly. It certainly wasn't done with theory anyway, okay? And Tesla had theory, and it failed catastrophically. He squandered millions of dollars, accomplished nothing. So, um, it, yeah, obviously the Wright brothers wasn't about theory. Lots of things weren't about theory beyond simple theory like the Wright brothers knew the lighter I make the plane the easier it is it's going to get in the air so you know so they had lots of simple theory but they didn't need to know anything about complex buoyancy arguments or charge arguments about lift to engineer an airplane and obviously most of the things engineered were engineered that way not by theory so again this argument that somehow if you understood electricity as particles in 1900 um, you wouldn't have been able to invent a light bulb or something. Of course you would be able to. But rather, ether medium engineering. So you, you think that uh, Edison believed in an ether medium engineering? I don't think so. <laughs> so, you know, this is just more, just uh, sorry, this is just mush. Uh, mainly via Maxwell, Heaviside, Tesla, Steinmetz. And what did they invent? So again, you really do think that just these characters invented electricity. You think that's how the history really is. You don't think somebody like Benjamin Franklin had anything to do with it, or, you know, Volta, or <laughs> Rutherford, or, I mean, I could just go down Faraday. You don't think they had anything to do with it. Oh, okay. Anyway, your bullet analogy. Photons are supposed to carry variable E equals HF energy per bullet. Well, I, I said right in the video, I, I don't subscribe to this idea that energy is explicitly uh, frequency because it isn't. Okay, frequency means has some logical consequences. 
Um, you got the higher the frequency, the narrower the polar. I said this in the video, right? That's the, the narrower the polarization. That means the the energy hits a smaller surface. So the smaller the polarization, the smaller surface you're hitting. Obviously, the energy is going to have more of an effect. And clearly, you know, blue light. There's more nodes in blue light than there are red light. So if they were bullets inside of the photon, okay, if the photon was made out of two or three bullets. Um, and the distance between the bullets is closer, you can fit more bullets in the same amount of time. Now, I'm sure I made that argument in the video, so why are you making this, why are you saying this stuff? You're just pretending I didn't say that. Oh, okay. The 3 hertz wave carries a constant H per wave cycle over one second of time, which is just more mush. This isn't how you do the math. Clearly, inside of a... Um, you know, one second of distance at the speed of light, there is trillions of photons. That's why it's trillicycles, okay? It's not three hertz. It's photons are traveling at, you know, 46 trillicycles. So wh why does this have a, why, what is, what's the relevance of this? This idea that you're insisting that you have to collect photons in one second of time is just nonsense and that you don't believe in, in standards I mean you don't believe in comparing a pound and then weigh a bunch of other stuff and say how many pounds does it weigh you don't believe in that concept of standards I mean that's the only way we can really understand something is to put it in terms of horsepower or some other thing like watts you know because we're all familiarity with watts so we all know what a hundred watt light bulb is and we know how much blah, 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 light that produces and so everybody can have get an idea of what a hundred watts is um, so yeah, we use standards. I don't know. I don't. And so, a person in his own comment section points out how this is kind of a bullshit argument, and um, and he's still asserting it. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I point out it's a bullshit argument. So if this is what you're going to stand on, this bizarre interpretation of a mathematical formula, and it is bizarre. I don't know who shares it with you, but. It's bizarre. I didn't even know people did this to mathematical formulas. So then photons, I mean, this is what, Ken Wheeler's stuff or something? Miles Mathis? I don't know. So then photons would have a frequency built into each bullet. So again, what's, what sense are you making? Are you saying then a wave that hits a shore, there's a wave frequency built into each wave? It's automatically a wave frequency? So if all I saw was the very tip of the hump, I'd somehow know what frequency it is, even though I never saw another wave coming? Of course I wouldn't. Uh, plus the frequency of one second in time. So again, I, I, can't make any, I can't make any sense out of this, your lack of understanding that it's just a standard. You're just saying, compared to this, this is how much energy it has. So compared to a pound, this weighs an ounce. Compared to a pound, this weighs 673 pounds. How, do, how are you messing that up? That type of compounding makes a big difference and isn't analogous to a 3 hertz wave drawing example. I, your wave drawing example can't make any sense to anybody rational. Because 3 hertz compared to 3 trillahertz, you can't draw the two things on the same page. They're, they're so dramatically different. The scale is so dramatically different. Why are you forcing a photon to be 3 hurts. Why are you forcing it to stretch over such a huge amount of distance at the speed of light? It doesn't make any sense at all. Anyway, I would love to see your experiment with particles through a double slit that maintains the wave interference pattern. Well, again, it doesn't, it's not a wave interference pattern, so uh, I'll clue you in that that rhetoric will die. Uh, you know, the future that won't be the way they describe it. It'll be a reconstruction, a photon reconstruction pattern. Um, and um, and the sim you know, it's a pretty simple thought experiment, right? And I really shouldn't have to do this, right? You, that I have to actually go out and get a piece of plywood and cut holes in it, you know, twice the size of a tennis ball, let's say, and then throw tennis balls and have them hit the edges of the wood and go in different directions. And then I'll have to explain to you that, you know, hey, it's a, it, tennis balls aren't freaking photons, okay? So the difference between a tennis ball and a photon is a photon will hit the slit and it won't change its velocity any. 
it'll absorb a tiny bit of time, but it won't absor it won't absorb its velocity at all. It won't change its velocity. So, um, you know, so it's a pretty different comparison. So I can't really do it with tennis balls because I can't make tennis balls not hit surfaces with different rules than photons interact with electrons. But regardless, so if you can, but you know, your imagination should be broad enough that you can get the idea. Okay, so there are perfect slits and all that happens when the tennis ball hits the surface is it's deflected. Okay, it doesn't lose velocity. Well, then you can understand if I was throwing the tennis balls at, th you know, three tennis balls per second at some constant rate, and then you went to the backboard and received the photons, the tennis balls, and you just counted where they hit at exactly the same timing cycle. That is three per second. So you had the, th the same exact timing cycle where they hit. Well, then you'd say that's a photon, okay, because three of them hit and three of them hit at three balls per second. So that would be a photon. The point is, is that it logically would come out the same way. Now, I mean, I drew a picture of it in the other video. I mean, but I really shouldn't have to, right? I mean, this this is so elementary. So the idea is, is you know, you have the, the slits. And I, I just make them, you know, twice the size of a tennis ball. So you can sort of understand there's a high likelihood the tennis balls will hit the surface and deflect. And you can see mostly of that, mostly of that. Uh, what the hell happened to the camera? I don't know, Gary. Uh, this is what happened to it. Yeah, yeah, it's just not all the way in the frame. That's it. All right, anyway. Um, so you can understand, if I, if I throw the tennis balls at a specific timing cycle, and then I receive them at a specific timing cycle, the only ones I count are the ones that showed up in the right cycle. One, two, three. Time one, time two, time three. Okay? You can understand that, yes, the, the same distance arguments would apply. This would be a shorter distance. You could have one that goes right th straight through here, and that would be, a, you know, this would be its wavelength marks. And then you, this one over here, so that would come up T1 from there. And then you could have one from here, you know, from, say, I should do this further slit, but we'll just say this surface, and that one will show up, and the notches will match. It'll be in phase, and that'll show up at T2. Right, and then this one can show up at T3. You know, so I remade a photon. So these were all independent photons hitting surfaces, hitting surfaces, and um, and we know this is how the experiment really takes place, right? It's not like I throw tennis balls. No, I throw a million at one time. We know that when photons are going through, it's a million of them going through here at once. So there's lots of pieces flying all over the place. So all I need is scatter. So I scatter pieces to all these locations, and at certain locations, the vectors work, and they're in phase. And where they're going to be in phase means they are going to have the, the you'll be able to put them back at the proper distance from each other, and you'll recreate the pattern that is a photon. The pattern that is a photon. Photons are a pattern of energy, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, energy, I'm trying to think of the word of landing. <laughs> you know, it's a good word for landing. Um, energy transfer, okay? It's a pattern. And all you have to do is duplicate the pattern and then you have the photonic reaction. You're able to move an electron if you have the right phase. So you use the word resonance. That's the resonance you need. You need to match the resonance to the material you're hitting, and then you'll get a reaction. Either the photon will be reflected, and you'll see it, or the photon will cause some other reaction uh, called electricity and send you a signal saying, yes, I got the right pattern. Pattern received. So, I mean, you can get this, right? I mean, you don't have to modify the experiment very hard to understand that if I really did have slits that were only twice the size of a, a tennis ball, that there'd be a high likelihood that a lot of them are going to deflect off the surfaces. And I'm obviously arguing that it doesn't deflect off surfaces, it deflects. The photons interact with electrons on the surface. There's more electrons on the surfaces, near the surfaces, than there are electrons in the middle. So there's a higher likelihood of hitting an electron and being deflected, scattered a much higher likelihood. And all the light that makes the fringes, as I stated in the video, 
all of it is made out of light that actually went next to the surfaces and was scattered. All of it. All the fringe light. And all the brightness in the center was photons that just went straight through and didn't hit anything. Well, anyway, I've already made these arguments. You're pretending you didn't understand them, I guess. I don't know. But you're not in any way um, making an argument that I think is valid. So I can fully appreciate that the conventional theory is wrong, and I'll make plenty of arguments pointing out how they're wrong. My specific argument to you was you're pointing out the wrong arguments. The reason why they're wrong is because they keep using wave math, because they keep saying it's a wave interference when 200 years ago when Jung drew it, it was wrong, and it's still wrong. So, you know, you challenged me to produce the... the no plywood tennis ball experiment for you, well I challenge you to do something much simpler. Just draw me the picture of single slit interference. Draw me the picture of how your waves come in and somehow create the interference pattern. You don't say it's a diffraction pattern, it's an interference pattern. So you can play any game you want, but it's clearly an interference pattern. It clearly has a large node in the center and then it has fringes all right why don't you draw me a picture of where your waves are because the math is clear on this subject the math is not wrong this distance is going to decide it right here this distance between this surface and this surface that's where all the vectors will be drawn and so the Sioux show me how you can put your waves in here because you can't put two waves here and then draw, well, this wave interferes with this wave and this wave. No, that doesn't make any sense because then the wave breaks right in the middle and it goes over the edge, which can't make any sense to anybody reasonable. So where are you going to put your waves? There's no place to put them. There's no way to make it a rational argument. There's no reason to explain why there's two waves in the first place. None. Why, does, why do plane waves go into this, in, or, you know, into this and turn into two waves? And the only place you can put them to be mathematically correct is here. Why would they break here? And why would they go over this and through the surface? That isn't going to work. Because your center has to be right here on the surface. Because that's where the whole thing happens, is on the surface. Only the photons that go near the surface uh, end up getting scattered. That's the real explanation and it also explains why this is here because I've already explained that this is a false this inside this one millimeter okay the the in phaseness inside that one millimeter is such a small and irrelevant thing that means nothing the real phase difference is this line and this line wait, wait I'll explain this in another video so I'll link below to the 15 17 minute video on the subject it completely blows up wave as an explanation for the slit experiments. Waves don't work. The math doesn't work. The whole thing is fake. You can't draw it rationally. It's nonsense. Beyond reasonable doubt. I've proven beyond reasonable doubt that it's a garbage explanation. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. They just pretended. That's all. <laughs> because it doesn't work mathematically. In 99% of the possible two-slit arrangements you could draw, their math will fail. All right. So, I got to the end, right? I forget. Uh, I would love to see a bit better. So what is your definition of a single, f uh, okay, so and then he says wave interference pattern like I was showing with the laser light. So again, I pointed out how your example is with one of the extraordinarily bizarre slit experiments in the sense that you've eliminated the differences in the distances. This, if, you, if you put a tiny little shred of a, a line in, then obviously the difference in the distance from this surface and the difference from this surface becomes irrelevant because it's less than a wavelength of light. It can't possibly create multiple wavelengths of vectors. There's only one vector. It says one vector. So it can't p create any pattern. So then you're back to only two surfaces. So if you use a really tiny impediment, you have a two surface experiment again. And if you use really tiny slits, then you have a two surface experiment again. All right.
but do it with real open slits and real impediments that have, you know, that are realistic. 100 nanometers, uh, I mean, 100 times the, the wavelength of a, a photon, you know, a half millimeter or a quarter millimeter. Have quarter or have half millimeter openings and a, and a quarter millimeter impediment, and you're going to get a very spectacular double slit experiment pattern. And you'll have no way of explaining it with two waves. Can't work. Won't work ever. Anyway, so what is your definition of a single photon? So, again, I've, as I've pointed out, a photon is a pattern. It has to have at least two nodes to it. So, it has to have two elements, or you can't have a frequency, obviously. The frequency is dependent on the distance between the two events. That's the frequency, the distance between momentum A and momentum B. And maybe it's made out of three. And then you could say, okay, you have to have three pieces of momentum, have to hit a surface in a particular order for there to be a, an electrical impulse. And that's what we call a photon. We measure a photon with a clump detector. <laughs> okay, that's how we see one. Is with a clump detector. All right. A pattern detector. All right, so that's enough. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would encourage you to continue the argument where you're capable. Um, you know, try to either pick me apart or pick them apart or uh, defend your own arguments against the criti criticisms I've brought up, but you really haven't done that. So you're really not defending your math gimmick, and it's just a gimmick. You're certainly not de defending any kind of notion that you can make any kind of statement that particles can't explain, because yes, particles can. So you want to say something like that, go ahead and say it, okay, but it's not true. You haven't tested all the particle theories, and you certainly haven't tested my theory. Um, so I'm just going to assert to you plainly that the simple answer is scatter. It's a common event, happens all over the place, light scattering off of electrons or atoms or dirt or dust or water molecules, happens all the time, and it provides a simple explanation for the pattern. And you don't have to have a force interact with a force, which there's no examples of that happening uh, anywhere else in the real world. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, inter photon interference is just nonsense. Anyway, enough of it. Okay, we'll call it quits. Ah, we'll do this first. So I like it. And then we'll quit. <laughs> yeah. So, till the next time. And such. Hopefully this will work.